points and point groups in Civil 3D. When you're looking at the ribbon, primarily there are three places that we're going to work with point data. First, on the Home tab, under Points, you'll see uh, Point Creation Tools, Create Points Miscellaneous, uh, has a manual point entry, point entry by Northing and Easting. Again, under the Point Creation Tools, you have the Create Points dialog box. On the Insert tab, under the Import Group, Import Points from File. This is used when bringing in data from a CSV or text file. On the Output tab in the Export Group, you have Export Points. This is used when exporting point data from your drawing to a CSV or text file. I'm saying or text file, but you'll find that working with CSVs is really the easiest and cleanest format. It opens in Excel, it's easy to modify or move around and ordinate the data because it's in that uh, cells, columns, and rows format. When I receive a text document, I convert it to a CSV immediately. It's just so much easier to work with. All right, let's get into point creation. If I go back to the Home tab, Points, and Point Creation Tools, it opens up the Create Points dialog. Whatever I'm about to do with point creation, regardless of the method, I want this dialog to be present and visible on screen. Here's why uh, some of the most important presets controlling uh, the way my points will be created are found here in the Create Points dialog, specifically the options under Point Identity. You'll see that the first three questions are the most important. Next point number, use sequential numbering, and the point number offset. So it's going to start numbering from point one because that's what's filled out here in the box. Use sequential numbering, it'll count upward. Point number offset is one, so it'll count upward in increments of one. If I came to the next point number and typed in 300, for instance, it would begin creating points at 300 and it would count up sequentially in increments of one at a time. All of the options underneath these top three are used for importing specific types of files by others, some that didn't come equipped with point numbers, some that did if you want to add a special offset. They're not used very often. Typically, it's just these first three options that you need to be concerned with. For information about the rest of these options, I would recommend consulting the online AutoCAD knowledge base. Okay, so we've set our next point number at 300. Let's go ahead and create a point. You'll notice that when I Hub over this, it says uh, it's manual creation. If I pull down this flyout, there are other ways to create a point. Typically, I'm going to go with manual. That means that a point will drop uh, wherever my cursor is, and I could pick end point, center of a circle, etc., and just manually place the point wherever I want. So I'm just going to go ahead and click here in the environment. That's left click. Down in my command line, it says enter a point description. I'm going to call this test one. Specify a point elevation, 100. That's if you know an elevation that you want to enter. You can also just hit the decimal, just type in zero or hit enter and breeze through the point elevation if you don't have one. So it's created a point. The format or the label style that I have loaded in this template is point number, description, elevation. I'm going to create the next point. This is test two in the description, and the elevation is 101, enter. And you can see that it's counting sequentially. Test four. You can see what happens if I enter through the elevation column. It just skips the elevation field completely. Now if I go to my prospector and click on points, it'll show me all of the points that are in the drawing. Again. 303 was created without an elevation, and you'll notice that in the point elevation field, there's no value there. Now let's see what happens if we close our dialog box and then hop back into it. Go to the point identity. So it reset the numbering to 300. It went back to the first modification that you entered. So if you wanted to pick up after 303, you would have to know what your next available point number was by, again, going to your point listing in the prospector. I can see that it's 304. 
I can enter 304 here as the next point number, enter, and click on manual point creation, and then I can keep entering points. And it'll start counting sequentially again. You see this time I entered through the description and the elevation, and so both of those were left blank. Side note, if I go up to points miscellaneous, that's where creation by northing and easting is. If you were going to create a point by inputting uh, a published northing and easting, some known value, I'm not sure why northing and easting didn't make it to the flyout uh, in the create points dialog, but it's not there. However, when you use anything on the miscellaneous tab, you still need to have the create points dialog open for it to utilize your sequential numbering and continue counting from the next available point number. If you're following along with me, then it's possible that when you created your first point, only an X showed up. Why might that be? I'm going to go over and hop into a drawing that doesn't have a template assigned to it. And I can tell that it doesn't because it's just got general layout tabs. There are no point groups created. Here I am in the Create Points dialog. Point identity is set to number one. I'm going to create a point, enter through the description and elevation. And you'll notice that all it did was uh, create a big X. Why is that? Well, if I left click on the point and come over to the properties, uh, the point label style is set to default. So is the point style. The point style is the marker. The label style is the text. If I go and look at the default settings in the create points dialog, default styles, those are both set to standard. So it should be showing me my text. So what's overriding this? You'll notice that now that I created a point, there's an available point group. It's the all points point group. Only point one is in it. And if I right click on that and go to the properties, here are the default styles again. Point style is set to standard. The point label style is set to none. So your point groups have the capability of creating overrides that override the default style as shown in the create points dialog. So if I go to this point group property, come down to the point label style, and change that to standard, apply, and OK, now my points should have the typical look and feel that they would when I was working utilizing a template. So if I were to create a point, test one with an elevation of 100, now the point has all of its values, elevation, description. You'll notice that it looks a little different from the text in my drawing with a template. That's because I set this style up to look the way I wanted and then saved these particular drawing settings out to a template. So if I were to save the changes that I've made here, but by changes I mean setting the properties, default style, point label style to standard in the all points point group, and then did a file, save as, drawing template, this template would now create points using the standard label style that you see here. I certainly recommend creating a template that contains settings for your points and labels so that they look the way you want them to when you are working with data or creating exhibits in the Civil 3D environment. Let's go back to the points list in the prospector. If I wanted to edit a point, I can simply double click here in the point list. I've clicked into the point elevation field and I can enter whatever value I want, hit enter. And now that's saved to the point list and you'll notice that point 303 updated in the environment as well. What if I wanted to change a point number? Well, let's look at 305. I'm gonna double click in that field and I'm gonna change that to 310 and hit enter. You'll notice that that was updated in the point list, but it didn't update in the drawing. For some reason, when you perform renumbering, the drawing itself doesn't update. You need to come to the command line and type in regen. That's R-E-G-E-N. It regenerates the drawing and those point numbers are updated. There's nothing that you can't modify in the points list. But be careful that you don't accidentally modify the northing or easting of a point. I can edit the description by going to the raw description field or anything else as I see fit. Another way to edit points would be to left click, select the point itself, and then right click and go to edit points. It'll bring up a point list that contains only that individual point, and you can edit its information there, the point number if you needed to, the elevation, the raw description, etc.
One more point regarding your point label styles. I'm going to go ahead and set all points back to the none point label style where it is out of the box when you open up the AutoCAD environment. And I want you to notice that if I were to select those points and go over to the properties dialog box in the point label style, I could also set it to standard there. Remember that when you change properties, you've only changed the setting inherent to these two points. You didn't change the way AutoCAD is going to operate moving forward the way you would if you were to change the settings over here in the prospector. In a future training, we're going to go over importing and exporting points. However, I'm going to bring in a point file now so that we can talk about some additional visualization settings when you're working with a large group of points in any particular drawing. I'm going to go to insert points from file. Select the point file I want to bring in and pick a point file format. Okay, so I've brought in a big point file. One of the things that you'll notice is that the point labels are so large that they're on top of each other overlapping and it's really difficult to discern the difference between individual points and their descriptions. If you're familiar with working with annotation scales, you'll notice that this drawing is set up to be viewed through a viewport at a 1 to 20 drawing scale. But when we're working with the points here in model space, which is our one-to-one -one representation of the world as it is on the ground, it's easiest to work with this data at another scale. I recommend one-to-one -one or one-to-five. If I hit one-to-one, -one, you'll notice that the points are kind of tiny and far apart. If you're working with tons and tons of data, one-to-one -one might be your best option. But typically, one-to-five is a great option for working with uh, large topographic sets or performing point calcs. But one-to-five isn't in the list. So we're going to go ahead and create a custom annotation scale by hitting custom, add, under the scale name, I'm going to use the same format as the rest of them in the list. One inch equals five feet, scale properties, paper units is one, drawing units, I'll set that to five and hit OK. Then I come back down to my annotation scale and use my new custom option of one to five. Now everything's a nice legible size and I can still zoom out a little bit, look at my data, but read the descriptions and point numbers pretty simply. Let's go back to the prospector and look at our point groups. You notice that again, the out of the box, all point groups was created automatically. There are some other groups that I've created as a part of my drawing template. Whenever you see the exclamation mark next to one of your point groups, it means that your point groups need to be updated. So it's saying something has changed and it, AutoCAD wants you to tell it to go ahead and apply those modifications to the point groups as well. So if I right click on point groups, I can hit update and now each one of the point groups has been updated to reflect the current drawing. Let's create some additional groups. If I go to point groups, right click and hit new, in the name I'm going to create a new point group that contains only the control. Call it control. Here are my default styles again that I could change as overrides if I wanted to for this particular group. I'm going to go to the include tab and say with numbers matching. I want only the control and the control is sprinkled throughout all of the points that I see. I could click on selection set and drawing and then go and individually pick each one of those points. But in this case, it's going to be easier for me to enter what I know to be the range of points where the control is located. And that would be everything under 1000. So in the point numbers matching, I can type in one through 999 and apply. There are other options in your properties with elevations matching, uh, with names or raw descriptions. There's even an exclude tab where you could exclude specific numbers, but you can leave points out of your selection set on the include tab as well by saying, for instance, points one through two comma, and then points four through 999. This will specifically leave out point number three in your selection set. and then apply and okay. Now if I go and click on my control point group, you can see that the only thing contained in it out of everything that's in the drawing are point numbers less than 1000, which is specifically my control. I can go ahead and create another group for this topographic survey data. 
the group name is going to be topographic data. And I'm going to include numbers matching 1,000 through 9,999. Apply and OK. Now in that point group, I have all of my topographic data, as you can see down here in my point list, but no control points. If I wanted to continue creating points, now that there's other point data in my drawing as well, I would need to take a look at my points list and figure out where I would like my numbering to fall. So I can see that my control goes through point 303, so I could start my numbering at 304, and my topographic survey goes through uh, 2274, so I could start at the next available point number if I wanted to. What happens if you create a point using a number that's already been selected? If I go to Home, Points, Point Creation Tools, Point Identity, let's say that I uh, wanted to enter 101 because I wasn't aware that it had already been used in the drawing. It'll immediately tell me that that point number has been used when I'm using the Create Points dialog. What if I wasn't using it? Well, if I attempt to create points without the use of the dialog, it's just going to take me right to it anyway. It's a great circular system that forces you to do things the right way and intelligently work with your point settings. Thanks for visiting Lean Survey. There are plenty more best practice, quick tricks, and tip videos on the way. Be sure to like, leave a comment if you have recommendations for content, and click that subscribe button for more.